Hello and welcome to the Star Trek Winnipeg show. Before we get into the, today's show, I'd just like to mention that the show will be moving to Saturdays at 8 o'clock. Uh, today we have somewhat of a television first for you. I'm sure many of you Star Trek fans would have loved to be on the set of Star Trek, the motion picture, during the filming of the movie. However, the set was under closed and tight security. No one except actors and technicians were allowed on the set. Well, almost no one. Two Winnipeg girls, Lori Brownstone and Sandy Richardson, were vacationing in Los Angeles just about the time the movie began filming. By sheer determination, luck, and inside help, they managed to get into the Paramount lot and see the, st the Star Trek set. Not only did they see the set, but they also met and talked with many of the actors, including Bill Shatner. This may seem like a dream come true to many people. However, their visit is documented in the book, Chekhov's Enterprise, by Walter Koenig. We have... We are fortunate today to have Laurie Brownstone, who uh, will share her adventures with us. Before we talk with Laurie, here's a pre-recorded announcement giving you some information about Star Trek Winnipeg uh, Club, of which this show is a part. We'll be right back with Laurie. Over ten years ago, a very unique television series aired. It was to take us to far-off worlds and distant stars. It must have a huge following, even years after its demise. The show is called Star Trek, and today Star Trek clubs and organizations all over the world continue to discuss the ideas it created during its three years on the air. And now Winnipeg also has a Star Trek club, devoted to Star Trek and science fiction fans. Here to tell you a little bit more about it is the president of the organization, Mr. Greg Young. I'm Greg Young, and at Star Trek Winnipeg, we offer events and opportunities for all those interested in the worlds of Star Trek and science fiction. At our monthly club meetings, members participate in discussion panels, perform plays, and view films and even actual Star Trek episodes. For a $5 membership, you receive this card identifying you as a Star Trek member and allowing you a 10% discount at certain Winnipeg bookstores. Also, your name will be on our mailing list for the monthly newsletter entitled Short Treks, uh, telling of upcoming events and club news. And members receive a discount on our club fanzine containing fan art and article from various club members. But also at our meetings, you have an opportunity to get such Star Trek items as buttons, posters, uh, Vulcan ear tips, and even uh, club iron-on t uh, <laughs> club iron-on transfers. So you're, if you're a Star Trek fan, or interested in science fiction and fantasy, why not consider becoming part of Western Canada's largest Star Trek organization? To become a member, come to one of our monthly meetings every second Tuesday of the month at the Planetarium Auditorium. Or for mo more information, call the planetarium at this number. Well, uh, we've got Laurie with us now, and uh, hello, Laurie. Hi, Hans. <laughs> I think the best way to do this is for you to just uh, start at the beginning, like you went to L.A. Uh, how did it start? Right. How did you hear about the motion? Well, picture? my friend Sandy and I went to Los Angeles in the summer of 78, and I had always been a big Star Trek fan ever since I had been young. And the first thing I thought about once we got to Los Angeles was just think, William Shatner's out there someplace, the cast of Star Trek is. But the thought of actually meeting them was, uh, was out of my mind because it was at that time an impossible dream. Then we landed in, in, um, in Disneyland and the funny thing was as soon as we walked into our hotel room, I turned on the television set and there were the reruns of Star Trek. And then I turned to my friend Sandy and I said, just think, he's out there someplace. It would be great to be able to meet him. And of course, my friend laughed and, and that was it. Okay. A few days later, we ended up in Los Angeles and we really didn't have any plans or anything we'd like to do. So we phoned up Paramount Studios and we decided to go and see Laverne and Shirley being filmed. And this was at about 2 in the afternoon. And what you do is line up for about 2 or 3 hours and they take you into a studio on the uh, on the Paramount set, and you w you watch it being filmed. And while we were standing in this long lineup, I heard from this boy in front of us that the Star Trek movie was being filmed. And of course, I got very excited that 
um, actually, within about a quarter of a mile from us, they were, they were filming it because the sets were just, just huge. So my friends and I went to the front office and asked about it, and I asked them if I could see it being filmed, and of course, they just laughed at us, and they asked us very nicely to leave. I wonder why. <laughs> right, I'm sure they have had many, uh, many requests like that. So after we saw Laverne and Shirley being filmed, it must have been about 5 or 6 o'clock at night, and we just started walking around the outside of Paramount Studios, trying to figure out exactly where to take the bus to get us back to our hotel. And we saw these huge gates. And I guess it must have been the uh, rear entrance. And there were security guards lined up at every possible entrance. And there was some sort of a confusion or something. And I don't know what it was exactly, but the security guards kept paying attention to something else. And my friend Sandy and I just kept walking and walking. And we had managed to just walk through the front gates. And I turned to Sandy and I said, I think we're in. And she says, I think we're in too. And then I said, no, there must be other people ahead of us. There must be another gate we have to go through because people just don't walk into a close set. So after we kept walking and we saw these people riding bicycles and things, we had realized that we were in the Paramount Studios. So we went to Studio 8 and 9 where the Star Trek movie was being, being filmed and we hung around there not knowing what to do and I was very scared and I kept saying to my friend Sandy, Sandy I think we should go, we're, we're not supposed to be here and she said no this is our only chance let's just stay here and find out what happens. So at that moment Walter Koenig who plays Chekhov walked out and so I turned to my friend and I said there's Chekhov and she I didn't know who Chekhov was, and so I explained it, and she said, come on, Lori, go and talk to him. Maybe through him you'll be able to meet Bill Shatner. And so I said, I can't, I can't. And my friend kept pulling me along, going, talk to him, talk to him. And at this point, he was, he was way down the street, and my friend Sandy and I ran up behind him, and Sandy tapped him on the shoulder and said, uh, hi. <laughs> and, and she introduced us and said, my friend Laurie has been a fan of Bill Shatner's for years and years, and is there any chance for us to get in? And he was very nice about it, and he said, how did you get in here? And then we explained the fluke, what happened, and he said, well, Bill Shatner's gone for the day, and we, we must have looked really sad because I guess Walter Koenig thought it was very amusing how we had gotten in, and he, and he was nice enough to help us. And he said, I'll tell you what, since Bill is gone for the day and the chances of you sneaking in are, are a million to one against you, meet me outside the studio at the corner of Gower and Melrose at about 7.15, and I'll sneak you into my car and I'll pass you off as my nieces. So at this time, we were ecstatic. I thought he was joking. I wasn't sure, but we decided to take a chance. So we left the studio that day. And I remember in the hotel room at night, I kept saying, Sandy, wouldn't it be great to actually see the sets? And she said, Laurie, I think you'd be happy enough getting in, just, just meeting him, saying hello, getting his autograph, and then leaving. So the next day, we took the bus about 6 o'clock in the morning. And by 7 o'clock, we were standing on the corner of Gower and Melrose. And we saw Walter Koenig drive up. He showed up. And he actually showed up, and he was facing the wrong direction, and he had to go around the street and turn around to pick us up, and we thought it was very neat how he actually had to go out of his way to pick us up. And he said, come on in the front seat. So here I am sitting in the front seat beside Walt, Walter Koenig, and he's sneaking us into Paramount Studios. And my friend and I couldn't stop giggling. I guess it was a release of tension. And we started laughing, and luckily we were be able to we were able to control it as we went through the back gates because we just drove through without any trouble at all. 